Hey, what's up guys? Um, wanted to kind of give you a little bit of uh, more of an update on the studio progress as it's coming along. You can see the wall's been painted. I posted a little bit about that and uh, things are coming along really, really nicely. And I uh, just wanted to share a quick bit. I'm completely washed out and I don't know why. It's just the lighting. I don't know what what's I, I got to work on that, tweak it, make it so that way I don't look so pale. So anyways, um, give you a cool little kind of brief tour of the space, not a very big space to explore, but it's uh, my space nonetheless, so here we go. And uh, over here, we got the basic setup where I'm, you know, over here recording the content. Just finished building this bar table today. Gonna stain it in the next couple days, but uh, didn't want to wait and decided to use it for uh, tonight's video. Regardless, it'll look a lot nicer in the next one. So, but, uh, you know, over here, is where I have like ring light set up is where the camera which I'm holding right now is, is normally goes and uh, over here I actually have a wine enthusiast wine chiller that somebody in my neighborhood left on the side of the road because they wanted to get rid of it and I thought you know what this might come in handy if I start running out of space in my other uh, wine door upstairs and I could uh, retrofit this to become a humidor essentially and uh, I haven't done anything with it yet she's been sitting here my wife's been asking me what are you gonna do with it or are you gonna actually do what you say you're gonna do with it and I haven't decided yet so but it's there just in case I need it you know being a pack rat for the sake of being a pack rat even though it's not my stuff but uh, I thought it was a golden opportunity decided to take it so over here you guys have seen me post a little bit about this this is uh, the soundproof dairy in fact I'm over here you can kind of hear a little bit of the difference. It's a little bit more echoey. We're gonna walk over here and you can hear the difference in regards to the sound dampening, I think. Over here, it's not so it's echoey. I don't know if you can hear any difference with the snaps, but I, I like to think I'm hearing it right now. So, and it's a little bit low hanging. As you can see, I'm kind of craning my neck a little bit. So I just installed this uh, folding uh, desk over here. I might have sat it a little too high, but it made sense to have it right here, just underneath the soundproofing. And I'm pretty happy with that. So got uh, the tarp down because I need to stain the bar table. So that's going to be my next project. And after that, I'm going to kind of take it, take a break from you know all the working on this kind of stuff so uh, until I can get some decor on the walls I've got some ideas for over here the space where I'm going to be shooting so that way that'll be what you guys see when I record so speaking of recording I'm going to go ahead and get to the bulk of the video and uh, yeah so let's go ahead and get that set up what's up everybody welcome to uh, another episode as it were but this is not a fresh review Friday even though I am publishing the video on a Friday uh, this Friday is currently May 7th and uh, we are in the midst of some very interesting news uh, as of late the FDA recently announced that it was going to be implementing a ban on menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars now the details are kind of murky at best in regards to what exactly this means regarding both of those categories of tobacco and what it means in regards to the premium cigar industry, how it's going to affect the premium cigar industry as a whole and in the future, and whether or not we're going to continue to be able to enjoy cigars as we enjoy them right now. So I thought I'd touch on this just a little bit, going to be sharing a little bit of the information that I've read on a couple of different articles and kind of interject my own personal opinion. It, I'm just a little guy, so it may not even matter in the grand scheme of things, so we'll just have to uh, touch and go. So let's cue that music and get talking. What's up guys, you're watching Dad Smoking Cigars, presented by StogieLives.com and Casa Cueva Cigars. From our Casa to yours, 
Thank you so much for joining me for another episode uh, from the channel. As I said, this isn't going to be a fresh review so much as it's going to be a fresh commentary, I guess. Um, I, I suppose that's what you could call it. It's a, it is definitely a commentary. Uh, some recent information uh, regarding the uh, sales of tobacco here in the United States and how it may potentially affect the uh, premium cigar industry. On April 29th, the FDA announced that it was going to be moving forward with a ban on menthol cigarettes as well as flavored tobacco, uh, flavored cigars, and uh, two very distinct and specific types of tobacco that are sold on the US market and abroad, but we're only talking about the United States here, so this is kind of an interesting move on the part of the FDA. Now, it's been talked about for quite some time, in fact, the premium cigar industry has been under a lot of scrutiny because there has been talk of adding more regulations and regulating tobacco and things like that and how it will affect businesses like the many brands that we love, many manufacturers that we enjoy. And it's not really that great of a thing because then that means there will be family businesses and many cigar businesses are family businesses. Um, they will be affected in the negative in the long run. Now as far as menthol cigarettes and uh, flavored tobacco is concerned, uh, I believe the FDA is targeting these two particular types of tobacco uh, because apparently it is a lot easier for young people to get their hands on them or at the very least uh, young people have more of an interest in menthol cigarettes and flavored tobacco because it appeals to them. For the longest time, and I think especially here in California, where people are going bonkers, they want to turn California into a tobacco-free state. Uh, you see a lot of the ads regarding uh, cigarette smoking and vaping and how it can affect you and how both of those things, particularly vaping, appeals to kids under the age of 18. And in some states, you can't buy tobacco or any tobacco products unless you're 21 years old. Some states, 18 years old, I believe. Here in California, unless I'm mistaken, and I am mistaken a lot of the time, uh, the legal age to purchase tobacco, I last I heard, was 18. But I, 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 let's just say for the sake of argument that you have to be 21 years old or older in order to purchase tobacco products. Um, but a lot of the vape flavors and things like that are geared towards kids and you see videos and things like that of kids. I mean, kids, junior high and high school kids hitting a vape. And uh, I'm definitely not down for something like that. I don't want kids to get their hands on cigarettes or vape, but we're talking about premium cigars for the most part here. And obviously we're touching on menthol cigarettes and what that means for the premium cigar industry at large. Now, in case anybody's wondering regarding the ban on menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars, that's not something that's going to take place immediately. It's been very clear, especially with all the vague language that was used in the statement by the FDA, that uh, there is some sort of deadline that they're going to try and reach after they go over everything and and try to work out exactly when they want to move forward with this ban. Um, but it is le very, very unlikely that the ban is going to actually happen in 2022. It may not even happen in 23 or 24. It may happen years from now, depending on what kind of agreement that the FDA comes to in regards to moving forward with implementing the ban. In any case, we have up to about a year, possibly longer, before we get any real details or specifics on what the ban entails and exactly what it means for not just the consumers of menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars or cigarillos and all that kind of stuff, um, but there's not really any clear idea of what the ban entails moving forward until possibly next year, possibly not until 2023, depending on how how quickly it takes for them to get their stuff. In any case, at least according to Half Wheel, uh, this was a weird way to make an announcement because the FDA, as stated by Half Wheel, and I'll leave a link in the description below of the article in particular that I'm mentioning, um, they tend to like to have their ducks in a row. And in this case, they didn't really have, I mean, much of any of their ducks in any kind of row or any organization whatsoever. This owes to the fact that there's really no clear process that's being presented, save for the fact that they just decided to announce that, yeah, at some point in the future, we're going to be implementing a ban on menthol cigarettes and flavored 
uh, cigars and cigarillos or whatever it is. In fact, they can't even be completely specific on what flavored cigars actually means because you think about flavored cigars, you think about brands like Swisher Sweets, which is a parent for Drew Estate. Drew Estate makes a lot of flavored cigars like the Java line and all that kind of stuff. And then you think about brands like Tatiana and then Kojimar, which is a, actually a, a, what my favorite flavored cigar brand. That, and in fact, that was the first cigar I ever smoked was a flavored cigar from Kojimar and uh, there's no real clear idea of how it affects those brands or brands like them or any type of manufacturer that offers uh, offers flavored cigars of any kind whether they be regular size or cigarillos or whatever it is that they have in their lineup there's no real clear idea of what the heck is going to happen regarding the ban uh, menthol cigarettes uh, is a little bit more straightforward because that covers a very specific uh, type of tobacco product menthol cigarettes are an alternative to regular cigarettes for people who like to have a little bit more flavor to their cigarettes it's kind of like a, 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 a minty or aromatic flavor from what I've been led to understand almost like you know almost like you would get from like a cough drop or something like that menthylated something that makes it easier to smoke the cigarette and uh, whereas flavored cigars I mean that covers a multitude of definitions and products and we have no idea what that's going to look like moving forward it has been stated however that there will be some flavored cigars allowed under the ban i guess um, there will be some brands that will still be able to produce and manufacture uh, their flavored lines and infused lines and uh, i don't know exactly how they get grandfathered in or how exactly that is going to uh, relate to other brands and whether or not they get banned or why they're going to get banned but uh, again there still isn't a whole lot of details regarding that plan in particular and it's pretty vague and as I said before kind of murky there's no there's no real um, there's no real detail in the announcement in that regard so uh, all they're saying is that moving forward they're going to be implementing a ban again menthol and flavored and we still don't know what this means now kind of backtracking to the reasoning behind this there are a number of states in the u.s that are moving towards being tobacco free well what does tobacco free mean exactly well the idea is to get tobacco out of the hands of the youth in particular now the idea is to encourage people to quit smoking uh particularly cigarettes and um vape just because there have been documented uh, harmful effects. I mean, cigarettes go back decades. I mean, it is very obvious the health risks that come with cigarettes and things like that. But then again, it's also been heavily documented that uh, various additives and things that are added to cigarettes, which make them addictive. Then it has been well documented that cigarettes are incredibly harmful to your health. And a lot of people just jump right to the fact that it's tobacco when the reality is there's been so many additives put into a single cigarette and people will smoke sometimes packs multiple packs a day and the health uh, the harmful health effects are obvious and have been well documented and it is very very difficult for people to quit and there are various programs that have been implemented all over the country to get people to quit smoking. Something which I'm very much on board with in regards to cigarettes. Cigarettes are uh, very, very harmful to your health as I just stated and it kind of has a personal thing for me. My grandpa smoked multiple packs a day. He developed emphysema, he developed heart disease and at the end of his life he was just in horrible health because of his smoking habit that he just couldn't bring himself to quit. And so regards to cigarettes and vape and stuff like that, because of the documented ill health effects, obviously that is something I'm for. And I'm definitely all for keeping those products out of the hands of kids because yeah, obvious reasons that go without saying. Now there might be some people who point out like, well, doesn't that make you a bit hypocritical? Actually it doesn't because of the also well-documented fact that in regards to the adverse health effects of cigars, they are minimal in comparison to the adverse health effects that are brought on by smoking um, cigarettes on a constant and, and consistent basis, as well as vape and things like that. So um, 
the differences between the two are vast. And if you look at the different studies that have been put together, it will show that, especially when it comes to the usage pattern for cigars as compared to cigarettes and vape, and also how, you know, nicotine and other things like that are absorbed and etc cetera, etc cetera, what goes into making a cigar and what doesn't go into a cigar there are vast differences in regards to how they will affect you health wise and there was a study that put out one that I've mentioned many many times that even if you were to sm smoke one to two cigars a day you would have a less than two percent chance of developing cancer there have been multiple people in the cigar industry, people who are the heads of some of the biggest brands in the world that smoked cigars for decades and they live well into their 90s and were in excellent health by the time they passed away. So am I saying that that should just be an excuse to smoke, 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 smoke? No, I'm not. Everything in moderation and you want to be careful because that doesn't mean that there are no negative health effects from cigars. It just means that uh, in regards to the usage pattern and how frequently you smoke, um, there are vast differences in how they affect you health-wise. And in one of congressional hearing, I believe it was last year, there were doctors brought in, health experts who said that there was very little negative health effects that came from smoking premium cigars, even on a fairly regular basis. So there are vast differences. So me smoking cigars while saying I think people should quit smoking cigarettes and quit vaping uh, doesn't make me a hypocrite uh, despite what some people might say. Now, how does the ban affect the premium cigar industry as a whole? That's not exactly abundantly clear. As I said before, the announcement didn't come with an abundance of details on how they were going to implement the ban, what was going to be, uh, you know, pertaining to the ban and, and all the details therein. They didn't really give a lot of details. Basically, they're just saying, oh, yeah, this is something we're going to do. And we don't know exactly how we're going to do it yet. Uh, but at some point, we are going to do it. And when we know how we're going to do it, we're going to let you guys know how we're going to do it. Um, I think that's pretty much what it all boils down to, at least from my vantage point. I may have no friggin' clue what I'm talking about, but it seems to be kind of the general consensus that they want to move forward with a ban on these two particular types of tobacco products, but they have no idea exactly how they're going to do it. And they also don't know when. It could be in the next couple of years. It could be in the next five years. It could take up to almost a decade. No one knows. It is just something that was announced at the end of April with no real clear direction on how or what, so far as I can tell. Now, regarding my personal opinions on the matter, uh, as I said before, I think that this is just a move towards trying to get people to quit smoking. And because of the different and adverse health effects that come from different types of tobacco products, I mean, again, well documented with cigarettes, well documented with like dip and tobacco chew and how it can affect, you know, uh, uh, how it can affect you like with, you know, different types of, you know, oral cancers like tongue cancer, gum cancer, gum disease, tooth decay, things like that. Um, there are well documented problems that come with using those products. Um, and again, there can be adverse health effects from smoking cigars. If you are someone who just smokes like a chimney, there is a good possibility you may develop some sort of health. Uh, it, as has been pretty evident in the last couple of years, the FDA and other types of government bodies are essentially trying to lump premium cigars into the same category as all the other tobacco products that have well-documented adverse health effects. And even though it is not impossible that you could suffer ill health effects from smoking cigars, it is far less likely that you would experience those same types of ill health effects uh, from smoking cigars, even on a somewhat regular basis. Someone like me who smokes maybe a few times a week, I think the most I've ever smoked in one week consistently for a period of time was like four to six cigars a week. That's not a lot in comparison to some people I know who smoke one every day, sometimes multiple cigars every day. Uh, most of those people who do smoke multiple cigars a day are in the cigar industry and that's just what you do and that is just something you enjoy and experience as part of your job within the cigar industry whether you're a broker or you are you know a manufacturer or you're just part of the team that markets the cigars one of the perks of being a part of a manu uh, 
working for a manufacturer or in the cigar industry is that you get to enjoy a lot of different cigars and that's part of the job to help promote whatever brand you're representing and so yes it's not impossible to experience ill health effects from smoking cigars consistently however studies have continuously shown that the usage pattern and also with what goes into a cigar which is naturally aged and fermented tobacco a lot like the many different spirits we enjoy and drink um, obviously consistent and excess use of those products can cause health problems but in moderation it is entirely possible for you to go the rest of your life smoking cigars on a fairly regular basis without experiencing any kind of health effects ranging from cancer to heart disease or anything else it also just depends on the person who's smoking them and how frequently and how many they smoke in a given day or week do i think that this is going to affect the premium cigar industry as a whole at least in the immediate sense well Odds are it's going to have some kind of impact, considering that there are manufacturers that offered an, offer a number of flavored alternatives to some of the you know bolder and you know more natural uh, cigars that many of us smoke. Unfortunately, uh, depending again on how the band, what is implemented in the band, there may be some of people who some people who may not be able to enjoy certain flavored cigars that they enjoy on a regular basis, which is a shame because there are some people who only enjoy flavored cigars and. The ty types of cigars that I enjoy, like for instance tonight I'm smoking a Two Brothers Maduro, which is just a delicious and tasty little Maduro cigar and uh, you know, a very different blended tobaccos within with the, uh, a, a nice little Maduro uh, broadleaf wrapper I believe and it's just a tasty smoke. It doesn't have any flavors added to it. It's not sweetened, it's not infused, it's just a simple cigar in that regard. Um, but there will be people who unfortunately may not be able to smoke certain brands that they know and enjoy and have enjoyed on a regular basis, which is unfortunate. But as it states in within the announcement, it doesn't seem to eliminate all flavored cigars and they haven't exactly specified on what flavored cigars actually mean. Is it just the little gas station Sicarios that you see? Is it any type of flavored cigar? Only certain groups of flavored cigars? Again, we don't have enough information because it wasn't provided. It was very vague in regards to what exactly is being told to us and we still have no idea what it means for the flavored cigars of various manufacturers. Are they all going to be banned? Not likely. Are some of them going to be banned? It would seem so. Again, we don't really know. So for those of you who heard the announcement, I doubt any of you were freaking out, but say for the sake of argument, there were some people who were freaking out. Relax, this is definitely not an immediate thing. At the very least, it will be a year before we even hear what the ban actually entails and what it's going to be made up of, what the details are, and how it affects your favorite flavored or infused brands. We still have no freaking clue what exactly is going on and what it means for the cigar industry at large. Time is gonna tell on that one and details are hopefully gonna be forthcoming enough that we might actually get an idea how it's going to affect some of our favorite brands. But for the most part, all of us that enjoy, whether they be flavored cigars or just your everyday run of the mill cigars from your favorite manufacturers, uh, you can rest easy because they're not coming for your smokes, guys. They're not coming for my smokes. They're not coming for your smokes. You don't need to uh, hide your humidor in a bunker somewhere uh, or find somewhere to hide your infused cigars or your flavored cigars. Um, everything's cool for now, and as it stands, there's no actual ban in place, but just a proposed ban, and we still, again, have no idea what that means for the future. On a final, more personal note, I, I think that there is a level of silliness regarding these proposed bans and measures that are that government agencies and the FDA in particular are trying to take to regulate or even ban certain types of tobacco because there really is no clear end game in regards to what they're trying to comp trying to accomplish other than trying to get people to smoke less or not smoke at all which at the end of the day is not a clear enough or concise enough reason to take the actions that they are in my personal opinion because 
Obviously I'm biased being an avid cigar smoker and enjoying cigars the way I do, but I also appreciate the fact that many of these companies are family run businesses and we're talking about taking away potentially over time in the future, maybe, possibly, we have no idea. But the ideas floated around that certain regulations and certain rules imposed by the FDA and other agencies are going to make it incredibly difficult if they keep pushing these things for these families and these businesses to continue to make a living. And we're talking about real people, real lives, real families, and real businesses. And this is how people make their living. And I don't think it's cool at all to propose something that would eliminate the livelihood of a business that honestly is doing no harm to anyone in regards to they're providing something that is a luxury, something that is enjoyed by many people the world over. And yeah, you know what, again, there is not a 100% chance that you will never develop ill health effects from smoking cigars, but you are far, far, far less likely to experience those same health, uh, negative health effects that you would if you were to smoke cigarettes or vape or other tobacco products that have been proven to cause certain types of health problems with, ex you know, with extended or excessive use. So uh, personally, I think it's a little silly the way that the government goes about it, just because I feel like sometimes they're trying to jump on a bandwagon that says, oh yeah, this thing, mm, bad, let's just do away with it, or let's figure out a way to minimize it or regulate it, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when in reality, um, they just, you know, maybe need to really continue the encouragement of not smoking cigarettes, not doing vape, and especially keeping it out of the hands of our youth. And last year it was, you know, something of a, a controversy because they were proposing similar things, flavored cigars or cigarillos and things like that, thinking that they were getting in the hands of our kids, when in reality that cigars are not likely getting into the hands of your kids. It's cigarettes and vape that you have to worry about because they're far more easily accessible because they're available not just in tobacco shops or cigar shops. They're available in grocery stores, they're available in gas stations, and places where kids may be able to get far easier access to them. So I don't think you need to worry about your kids getting their hands on cigars because in my opinion, most kids don't have the patience to sit through smoking a cigar, but that's just me. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my ramblings and I hope you guys, uh, you know, got some information that was useful to you and uh, you're a little bit more informed regarding what's going on in the FDA and the ban on menthol cigarettes and flavored cigars and what this means for the future. As it is, we don't really know, but hopefully over time we'll actually get to see what is actually going to happen and whether it happens at all. So anyways, guys, thank you for joining me. I hope this was a interesting or shift from what I normally do. Um, I'm trying to change things up just a little bit. You'll still be getting some reviews from me, always cigar content every single week. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's Whiskey Wednesday. And I hope you enjoyed this video as well. So anyways, guys, I'm going to stop talking. I've already talked too much. So anyways, take care, guys. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning into this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And also follow Dad Smoking Cigars on dads underscore smoking underscore cigars on Instagram. And be sure to check us out on Facebook. Until then, guys, stay smoky, and I'll see you in the next one.